Welcome back to another episode of The Goonery. We have all three of us back for the first time in what feels like forever. Very happy to have Seth back on the show and pretty fitting considering his uh, his Phoenix Suns are in the NBA Finals. Seth, just want to hear your thoughts. I see you got the shirt on right now. Yeah, so the Suns have been, uh, they've lost the last two games. They went up, you know, they took a 2-0 lead on the Bucs, but I'll tell you what, they're just, the Bucs are playing lights out, and Giannis is, he's just incredible. But, like, huge props to the Middleton as well. They're just playing the game that they need to play. Uh, when the Suns went up two, to, you know, they went up two games to none, and I'm like, oh, they're sweeping these boys. It's not even going to be close. The Bucs are so, they're so gassed, and they, you know, they had such a tough series, really, even before, uh, you know, they had played us with Atlanta and then a lot of people, you know, a lot of fans in the NBA, uh, mainly like Reddit and online, they're just saying like, Hey, the Suns are the luckiest team. Cause we had to deal with kind of like a, you know, a torn and tattered, uh, LA Lakers team. And then we got the Denver nuggets without Jamal Murray. And they're like, Oh, they just, they had the easiest path. And I'll tell you what, like with Murray, even playing with the nuggets in that previous series, uh, they were not stopping the Suns from sweeping them. Um, and then, of course, we got L.A. without uh, the Clippers, without um, Kawhi Leonard. So it's been a nice little, you know, a comfortable run for us getting into the finals. But it's not like they didn't earn their right to be there. So, like, you know, when the playoffs are going on, every team is going to be dealing with injuries. We've seen it with the Hawks. You know, the Bucks were playing a beat up uh, Nets team and really – if any team benefited, it was probably them <laughs> from not having to play a fully, you know, because they had Kevin Durant, James Harden, and Kyrie Irving, and Harden wasn't at 100%, and then Irving was out too. But, uh, yeah, the Suns are looking pretty good. I'm hoping we bounce back. It's going to be tough to win, you know, four straight in this matchup. I thought we were going to sweep them the way that we were playing, but, uh, you know, Devin Booker came out, and he put he – put, uh, you know, he put on a show and it's just, it sucks because, you know, those games where he's scoring like 40 points and they lose, it just, it kind of hurts a little bit. And uh, that's what happened to Giannis. I think game two, he had like a, he had himself like a quiet, sneaky 40 plus point night. And, you know, they still just kind of got stomped by the Suns. But uh, uh, I'd like to say Suns in six, it could go, it's going to be six or seven game series. Uh, Well, I think it has to be six now, but it's going to be, it's going to be a finish. It's going to be a finish. So hopefully the, uh, it leans in our favor, but we'll see. The Suns got to play a little bit better. Uh, they got to stop breaking shots. And really that uh, that block on Aiden by Giannis at the end of it, where the Suns were about to go up, I, I was impressed. It gave me some 2016 uh, LeBlanc vibes. So mm-hmm. uh, kudos, kudos to them. I knew when that happened, I'm like, there's no way we're winning now. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> it's destiny. Yeah, man. I mean, it's definitely been – about as entertaining of a series so far as the league could have asked for. I mean, I know people are upset because it's like, oh, Phoenix and Milwaukee are two small markets. But don't you think that more people across the country are excited to not be seeing the Lakers or the Warriors or any of the big market teams like the Nets in the finals year in and year out? Obviously not the Nets year in and year out, but it, like, you, like you guys get what I'm saying. I know people – there's no LeBron in the finals or no Steph Curry in the finals, no Kevin Durant in the finals, and for what feels like forever, and I think it's just very refreshing to watch. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, I tell you, this season has exposed that basketball fans hate the game of basketball. And what I mean by that is you have – new guys, new stars that's being created within these playoffs and people are just crapping all over these playoffs because their, their favorites are not in it. And truthfully, that's the issue I have with fans that are fans of players over fans of teams, because anything that doesn't involve your favorite players, it doesn't matter to you. And and Giannis is one of the superstars in this in this game, but just because he can't shoot a three ball, people want to hate on him. And truthfully, I cannot find one thing that's hateable about Giannis. So that's that's one thing. If and I've, I've seen things on Twitter that oh, this final stinks. This finals is not living up to the standards. Let me tell you something. After what we saw last year with with the bubble and I and what we've seen over the past couple of years with the Warriors dynasty and LeBron uh, winning the championship in Cleveland what do basketball fans actually want because when the Warriors were dominating and winning the finals uh back-to-back years with Kevin Durant y'all had a problem with that 
because it was the same team. They were dominant. But now we have two equally matched teams that's in the finals, and still there are people that are upset. This further argument that people just hate basketball. They're only there for the jokes and to troll people. And truthfully, it's sad because when once you watch every single game of the series, has every game been close? No. But what what every game in the finals is going to be close? It doesn't happen that way. This finals has been as entertaining and has delivered on more than it was expected. And 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 what what is the reason for that? Because these teams are equally matched. You can't. It's it's literally a, a coin flip series. And because you can't make a, a definitive prediction of who is going to win. This series has been entertaining. And truthfully, I see it going seven. And that's the most best thing that can happen to the NBA, considering there was a lot of players that were really upset over the scheduling. And this is only going to take the heat off of Adam Silver, regardless of the injuries that have, that have accrued up, across this playoffs. Yeah, and before we wrap up, Seth, I just want to get your thoughts on the Suns and Four guy. I feel like he is just going to be making money for the rest of his life off of saying Suns and Four after punching a guy in the face. It was funny. To me, it was funny at first, but now I feel like it's just been buried so far into the ground like the internet tends to do with absolutely everything. I just, I just want to get your thoughts on that real quick. Yeah, he's definitely uh, – he's going to be a Suns legend like for the rest of his days, probably get a statue somewhere. And I think he's from Denver too and actually ended up getting a picture with uh, – uh, who was it, Jamal Murray, the one of the guy, the jersey of the guy that uh, he had punched mm-hmm. in the face. But, yeah, um, at least like I don't – I guess I could see where you're saying it's definitely overplayed and stuff. I think it's really funny. It's definitely – it's comical. Uh, you know, viol- violence is bad too, and apparently the guy had poured beard on him anyways. But – uh, I, I still think it's great. Suns in four. I love it. Come on. Like the Suns have been so oh, bad yeah. for so long and it's been, you know, it's been truly a blessing to like see him come back and be in the finals. And these guys just won like 19 games two years ago. So if it was like golden state, then, you know, nobody would care, but since it's the Suns, <laughs> it, it was a statement. It was a statement. And I will say too, like anytime the camera cuts to the crowd, Suns fans are just the most it's the biggest motley crew of people I think I've ever like I've ever seen it's bleach blonde hair it's shitty spray tans it's just it's the epitome of people who moved to Arizona and I just find that incredibly funny yeah I think our 8k fans look a little better than the the box 8k fans on the 8k camera so (laughs) yeah we got some better looking 8k fans I, I don't mean to be that guy, but the quicker this guy goes away, the, the better. I'm tired of it. <laughs> That's okay, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, too. And uh, before we move on, if the Suns do end up winning the NBA Finals, that means we'll have someone on the show winning, having their team win the Finals in back-to-back years, which only mm-hmm. means that the Bulls are in line next for year three. So I'm uh, already <laughs> seeing red. I'm already seeing red moving into next year but uh moving into our goonery of the week we've got uh two we kind of want to touch on first and foremost with the uh the COVID outbreak at the all-star game in my opinion at this point athletes were offered to get the vaccine before anyone if you're going to be getting paid millions and millions of dollars I, I don't know what you're waiting for at this point because I've seen the COVID restrictions too for the players on road trips. And even when they're at home, if you're not vaccinated, you're really not allowed by the team to do much of anything. And I just, I don't know because the Yankees apparently, I just found this out. They had had bullpen arms who had tested positive leading up to the all-star break and they're still in quarantine and they haven't announced who it was from the Yankees yet, but man, wouldn't it be something if it was a Rawlish Chapman who the internet already hates? They actually did announce the pitchers that got it. I've got, I know Lo Weisiger is one of them. Um, I forgot, I've got the other two, but they're, yeah, I know their their names have been revealed. I'll get that um, eventually. I believe it's, yeah, it's, um, it's, Damn, I'll get it. But regardless, what a crappy, crappy situation, because as as fans of sports in general, we thought we was going to be past this stuff. So when you see like stuff like this happen, you worry for football and that and you're almost thankful that basketball is at the finish line. So they don't really have to really deal with this stuff right away. 
But I mean, I mean, just a horrible start to the second half when you have the biggest rivalry in baseball and it has to be canceled due to COVID, um, a COVID positive test. Just an absolute shit show. These are, I have some like genuine questions too. So, you know, last year when the league was still playing and you, you know, there were no fans allowed in the crowds, um, no crowds. Uh, when is, at one point, is the league just, any league for that matter, any professional sports league, just going to say, all right, this is just how it's going to be now going forward. Cause like we can't make the players get vaccinated, but when is it going to just be okay for, you know, them to just kind of expose each other and then ride it out, you know, cause it's never going to go away. COVID's not going away anytime soon. And, uh, and it's interesting that we've gotten to that point. Cause before it's like, Oh man, now we got to shut down the team. Oh, this team has a, uh, you know, a bye week They're not playing this week because of COVID concerns. But now when is it going to get to that point where it's just like, Oh, well, you know, it is what it is at this point. Uh, <laughs> so that, I'm curious to see where it goes in that, in that matter. So it's still kind of fresh in everybody's mind, but you know, it, it's only been like a year, year and a half, yeah. but uh, yeah. It, one of the and things, it's in, oh, sorry about that. No, you're good, Brandon. Oh yeah. Well, one of the things I was going to say is if this was something that you would think would be politicized, that there might be bigger enforcements upon the COVID rules, but there's people on both sides who don't really want to take it. So that's the conundrum that you find yourself in because no matter how much you don't like, you want to play baseball because that's your form of income there is some risk involved when you don't get the vaccine, but uh, whether people want to admit it or not, because people can have their conspiracy theories about what it does to you. But at the end of the day, the, that threshold of 85% of players getting vaccinated has, has been a reason why we, they've gone through the season with no postponements of any COVID positive tests. So that might be something to think about if they really, really want to get their income and not have it to rely on a season like 2020. Yeah, and it's interesting to me too is if Major League Baseball at this point you have to, if people keep start testing positive again you're going to have to enforce some sort of forfeiting I think in my opinion just because like they've they've been trying to implement this 85 percent threshold to have everyone meet the standards and if you're still having teams at the halfway point in the season who are now going to start testing positive and look I get people have had it. You can get it again, obviously, once your antibodies wear off, and you can still get it with the vaccine. It's not like the vaccine is 100%. Like, that's that's a fact, but it just it blows my mind that if this poten- this breakout potentially comes from the All-Star game and it spreads across the league and they don't start making cancellations of games and forfeits, I, I just I don't know what they can do moving forward. It's, it's a bad situation because you're not going to have players capitulate to the rules but still – want to do what they want to do. And that is that that's where the problem lies, unfortunately. Yeah. So pivoting towards um, something that is not as serious as COVID. Uh, this past week, um, former Ram receivers, Isaac Bruce and Tory Holt came out and said that they are the greatest wide receiver duo of all time and that they are better than Chris Carter and Randy Moss. Not that I think that Chris Carter and Randy Moss are the greatest. I'm not entirely sure, obviously wasn't around enough to watch them, but I think it's quite foolish for Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce to say, because they won a Super Bowl that they're the greatest wide receiver duo of all time. I highly disagree with Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. And this has absolutely nothing to do with them because if you really think about it, Tory Holt and Isaac Bruce put up numbers when they were in St. Louis. The reason why we don't talk about them as much is because there was another tandem in Kurt Warner and Marshall Falk, and they were probably one of the greatest quarterback running back tandems of all time. So, of course, of course the wide receiver is not going to get that much love. But if we were, if we're going to go off of that basis, you can make a, you can make a case for John Taylor and um, Jerry Rice. You can make a, um, a you can make an argument for Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne. And truthfully, I can't go off of that because at the end of the day, you have to look at this. And this has been the case for a long time. There has not been a team in the past couple of years that has won a Super Bowl with, a, with an elite wide receiver. And it's crazy to think because you would think that there will be a number one guy that, you know, 
that they would go to in situations and need, but truthfully, it doesn't work that way. It's just a it's just a matter of being the right guy in the right time. So I I will back Holt and Bruce for being the probably the most underrated tandem of all time, but you still have guys like Tail like Taylor and Rice, Owens and Jerry Rice. You have guys um uh duper and clean from from Miami. And the reason why I would say personally that Randy Moss and Chris Carter are the greatest tandem of all time is look at the guys that was throwing the ball to them. No disrespect to Randall Cunningham, but he was never known for his arm when he was in Philadelphia. He was at a at an old age and they revitalized his career. Same thing with Warren Moon and the same thing with Dante Culpepper, because regardless of whether Culpepper was a first round pick, he still like they still made him look really, really good. And that and that shows after he left Minnesota for Miami and Oakland, he was not the same player. So in that regard, I think they're the best. I don't think championships have anything to do with this situation. Yeah, and I completely agree. I think uh, when you kind of bring the argument to, well, it's because we have a Super Bowl. You know, even some of the most, you know, bum players that, that were on the roster have Super Bowl rings. And, you know, uh, you mentioned it, too. And, of course, I'll be biased. I'm not saying that uh, Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne were a better duo than them, but I think they had more complete seasons. And they lit it up in the Super Bowl that they had played in. And I'm talking about uh, Isaac Bruce and uh, Torrey Holt. Like, they they tore it up in their Super Bowl, too. So, and I'm not trying to take that away from them. But, of course, like, I didn't really grow up watching them play either. But when you kind of make that argument revolving around while well, we have a Super Bowl, there's a lot of other, you know, duo wide receiver tandems out there that that don't have them. But I still think they could very well be better. Yeah, and my problem, or not even my problem, like my stance on all this, it's hard for me to like my eye test. I'm a big eye test guy and me not being able to see a lot of these guys play. I mean. My mem- my memories of Torrey Holt are the one year he played in Jacksonville. That's my age, just to put it into perspective. And um, if I just, based off pure eye test from wide receiver duos I've watched in my lifetime, there's two that really stand out. It's Roddy White and Julio Jones, who I think were the two most physically dominant pair I've ever seen together. And then you had Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall when they were in Chicago with Cutler throwing the ball. I'm not saying they're the greatest, but two best that I think I've watched have been those two undoubtedly. I mean, there was the one year, I think it was either 2012 or 2013 with white and Jones. And I think they combined, they combined for like 2,600 yards between the two of them and like 20 touchdowns or something crazy like that. And that was when Matt Ryan was maybe three years in the league, three, four years in the league. So he was still probably on his rookie contract at that point. And I mean, those Falcons teams were unbelievable. And then even like Kelvin Ridley and Julio these past few years have been unbelievable. And then you look at Marshall and Jeffrey. I mean, those two were just two massive sons of bitches who could go up and catch absolutely anything if they could stay on the field. So, I mean, it just, it, it's just, it's personal preference. It's all it is. It's, it's like the greatest quarterback of all time to be. You're never going to actually mm-hmm. settle it. You're who never going to settle it. It's... Sorry. I was, I was just going to say, who were some of the pairs that were with the Bengals? Cause they had some, you know, they were stacked at receiver a lot of the years and they, yeah. you know, still kind of are like a, you know, uh, what Chad Chad Johnson and TJ who's in Zada, yeah, mm-hmm. they were ridiculous two, too. Two Oregon State guys, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. I mean, honestly, TJ who's Zada, probably one of the more underrated receivers of the past 20, 25 years, like undoubtedly. Yeah, they used to stay in the you stay in the division. Uh, Hines went in Plaxico Burris. Like, there's a lot of tandems, a lot of tandems in the two thousands at the very least that were really, really good, but. I mean, some you have the most physically gifted wide receiver and the guy who's widely considered to have the greatest hands ever as a tandem. Like, I don't know how you can top that. I really don't. Yeah, and I and still isn't like Kynes Ward just not getting the love that he should. And that guy was just a f- absolute freak. He's awesome. so good. Yeah, he caught everything. He caught absolutely everything. He's the epitome. In my opinion, it's him and Wes Welker, the epitome of two guys who you'll throw it, and I'll, I'll don't care how big the hit is, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna hold on to it. Yep. And Definitely. I I'm gonna go there too. I'm gonna lump a tight end into this conversation, but I think one of the more dominant one-two duos we've seen obviously has to do with the quarterback play is Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill. And I know the debate. I mean, I know the debate 
has really become now in the NFL is our tight ends. Should they be treated like wide receivers? And obviously Travis Kelsey is one of the more physically dominant players I think I've ever watched just because he's a mismatch nightmare. But the mismatches that Kelsey and Hill are able to create together just continue to blow my mind. And I mean, obviously it helps having Mahomes throwing him the football and doing what he does. But you have a 6'6", 260-pound Travis Kelsey who can juke you out of your shoes, run you right over, catches everything. And then you have Tyreek Hill who's 5'8", and will just – run right by you no problem i mean that's just you, the thing is with these duos you need to have that different dynamic in my opinion to really stand out like when you had jordy nelson and greg jennings for example i mean jordy nelson was known as being the deep threat and greg jennings would just catch everything he's a great route runner and that's just why they worked and that, that applies to man there's there's so many tandems there's so so many tandems that's why this is hard to even even come up with but in my opinion and you know usually we do this behind the scenes i think we should come up with our personal top five tandems of all, all, all time and, and heck we can even take it to social media and you get their thoughts because i like i like to hear what everybody is feeling in this situation because truthfully it, it, it go a lot of routes and it also depends on who was born when and whatnot so yeah i think we should take that to social media with our fans yeah, and last thing, that's why it's so hard, too. It just really, everybody that's on social media right now, we took that poll, they're going to be like, who's eyes, you know, who's Isaac Bruce? Who's this guy? Oh, he's got a Super Bowl? Um, and that's what the problem is. A lot of people kind of rate your legacy on like, oh, how many rings do they have? Oh, only one? Only two? Well, Tom Brady has whatever. <laughs> so it's, yep. I, I just don't like the argument when it comes to who's got, who's got rings because there have been some stack duos on some bum squads that just don't get enough love because they're just kind of overshadowed by the success of winning Super Bowls. And uh, I think some of the great, you know, the great duos, the great receivers in general, even, you know, standalone when they're able to just like stick with a crap team for so long, that just speaks like, you know, much more volumes about them. It's like, I don't need to go chase rings. I mean, every player wants to get one obviously, but uh, when you just, you know, how Sean Jeffrey and, uh, Oh, who's that? Who's that other one been? I'm sorry. Brandon Marshall. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon Marshall. Marshall yeah. yeah. And you got Jay Cutler throwing the ball to you, which, you know, Jay Cutler gets a lot of hate, but he, there is other quarterbacks in the league that I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want on my team, you know, over, over Jay Cutler. But uh, yeah, anyways, that's, I'll just end it there. Yeah. Also, this is another tenant that I, that I missed that I thoroughly enjoyed, I enjoyed watching, which was uh, Larry Fitzgerald and uh, Anquan Bolden. Mm -hmm. I was actually going to mention them like because none of us mentioned them. I mean, they were sneaky, sneaky, incredible. Yeah, definitely. Because they were uh, they were the duo on the uh, Super Bowl squad they had right when they yep. lost to the. Uh, yeah. And both ACC guys. And I think in that one year, they both had like almost 1500 yards, which with Warner, which was absolutely insane. Yeah, that whole offense was insane. Like, it, that was a team that you just had to root for because they just had such an incredible run. Cardinals have never been to the Super Bowl, never won a Super Bowl. Like, that was a team that I was rooting very, very hard for. And it kind of broke my heart when they lost, especially the way that they lost. Yeah, at least it was a Buckeye, though. That's like the only, like, I can't stand Pittsburgh, but I'm so glad it was an Ohio State player that uh, submitted that uh, Super Bowl win for the Steelers. <laughs> but I completely agree. I'd much rather see the Cardinals win that game than Pittsburgh. I can't stand Pittsburgh at all. But if I have the, you know, if the glass is half full, it's Antonio Holmes that caught that game winning touchdown. Well, I mean, we're on the topic of Kurt, Kurt Warner. Did either of you see the God awful movie trailer for the oh, Kurt Lord. Warner uh, life story? It honestly looked like it would come in fifth place at like a high school film festival. The jerseys looked just, I, I, I mean, they looked like someone just like painted the yellow on the blue jerseys themselves. This, I, I, I mean, the, the characters in the uniform, look, they look like they were made from Blitz the League, the game. Like, like it, all, it all looked terrible and just, I'll, I'll admit, I have not seen the trailer. 
but just seeing the uniforms and the people in the uniforms was enough for me. I would not be watching it. I would not look at any reviews because I already know what the hell I'm going to expect. I'm good. And that's, it sucks because I love Kurt Warner. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks of all time, but I'm good. I just, I just pulled it up and actually I'll watch the trailer after we're done here. But I think it's even better that they're having like other actors like play as them too. Uh, no, that's interesting. They what they have Zach Levy playing as uh, yeah. Zach Levy playing as Kurt Warner. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chris, here's this potential lineup: uh, Chris Pratt, Chris Evans, uh, yeah, <laughs> prospect it. prospect characters for Kurt Warner. That's nuts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a movie. I get the gameplay is not going to look great, but in the preview, I think Zachary Levi looked like he had never thrown a football before. Like, it was brutal. It was it was brutal, and I hope it ends up getting better reviews than it looks like. Doubt it, but um, just on the topic of sports movies, real quick as well. The new Space Jam is out, and apparently. The movie starts with like a five to six minute um, intro video of LeBron highlights. So what else is new? Oh, Lord have mercy. I can't wait. <laughs> I love LeBron, but come on, bro. Come on. <laughs> Even in Space come Jam, on. he directed it. <laughs> yeah, oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, you, you had to know something along those lines was coming. But uh, to move into the final bit of the show brandon and i touched on it our last episode with the introduction of the name image and likeness proposal for ncaa athletes to finally start making themselves some money legally while uh while going to college and playing a sport going to school we decided that we were going to do a draft of just three endorsement deals that we personally would like to uh, like to have if we were for college student that we think we could benefit off. We the Brandon's going to be first. I'm going to be second. Seth is going to go third, and we're going to do snakes. So Seth is going to have two back to back picks. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing our different our different perspectives on this. Yeah. So I have to go with the obvious. N- number one for me is the greatest app that's out there, and that's YouTube. Because not only are you getting YouTube money, but you're getting that Google money too. So that's a pretty damn big deal. So YouTube is my first pick. All right. So I'm going uh, I'm going a little bit different here, kind of in the vein of um, Ohio State. Uh, I would want to sign on with the local car dealership at, or on campus. It's always been kind of an odd dream of mine to uh, be in a local commercial that kind of just lives in infamy and plays way too long on TV. There's, there's a Kia commercial that plays uh, where I'm from, from the South side of Chicago. And I think I've seen the same commercial for about 15 years straight. And if I was able to be in one of those shitty commercials and people just know who I am from the commercial, I think that'd be incredible. And, you know, if you could potentially finagle a free ride out of it, I think it'd be think it'd be pretty great it's so funny you mentioned that for like ohio state in the local car dealership i thought it was because you're about the roast like a lot of like uh you know former buckeyes go on to sell cars like in the local columbus area <laughs> that don't make it in the league and it just seemed it just seemed real fitting i'm like he that's pretty good that's a pretty good sneaky burn there i like that um <laughs> but it, it's very true i think even like herb street, maybe herb street did for a bit too um yeah, I can't remember all the players that go and do it, but there are some like pretty well known ones that just kind of they're just selling selling cars in the local Columbus area. But so one of the ones that uh, I went with, and I thought this was uh, you know I would try to be unique, stay away from like the super you know super obvious ones, you know such as Nike. I actually said for my first one, uh, Activision. So they're like a game development studio. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, or if anyone you know who listens to it's not familiar with it, uh, mainly kind of going with like modern warfare so call of duty like the war war zone craze that's kind of happening right now and it's been going strong for a little while now since modern warfare was uh remade uh yeah that battle royale and just think if you're you know you're a college student a lot of them play and a lot of them actually stream online and i almost even thought about uh mentioning like twitch or something like as a an endorsement that you could get as a college athletes because a lot of pro athletes are playing twitch right now in the off season especially uh, i think um claypool the receiver from Notre Dame who plays with the Steelers. It's what he likes to do uh, when he's not playing. But yeah, anyways, I think it'd be like super nice if you're like a, like a star, like a college, you know, college football star or college athlete star, 
uh, and you can get your character put into a video game like that, that'd be pretty nice. And then you can profit off of it. Why not? Right. Oh, and I, it's honestly pretty interesting to me because I, uh, there's a kid who played high school football around where I'm from. He ended up going to Notre Dame playing football there and he's graduated now. He started this company. I forgot what it's called exactly, but it's a platform where it allows, uh, professional athletes to play with, um, play video games with fans. I mean, the fans are obviously paying to do so, but, um, and I think the athletes have to pay a small fee to be on there. So it's kind of beneficial for both parties, but you have to wonder, like college athletes are going to be getting in on that too. And they're, they're going to be streaming video games. I mean, people make ridiculous money from streaming nowadays. I mean, people legitimately are just quitting their jobs to play video games. Kudos to them if they're able to do that. I wish, I wish. Yeah, all you got to do now is just like rub a mic on your butt and you're top page. <laughs> you're good. You're top page and you never have to work again. But yeah, no, I completely agree. And that's kind of why I went the video game route. And so another, you know, another one of mine too, it's another video game company, uh, EA Sports. So with the return of college football video games coming back, why not? This is your time to cash in now as a student athlete. Like, uh, let's say specific endorsements, like, hey, if you're signed, you're the new star, you're like, you're that cover athlete now. So it's like being on the cover actually means something for once, where, you know, they would just put whatever players on there before great players. But now it's like, you're the guy, you know, you're the guy, you're the girl on the next EA Sports video game. And it just seemed like a no brainer to me. And, uh, you know, that's kind of why we got into this debacle. Uh, Ed O'Bannon was, you know, a large reason why that video game series NCAA football had gotten taken away. So all these players playing online, uh, you know, they weren't making any, any profit. So they took it to the courts. Yeah. It looks like we lost Brandon real quickly, but I just want to comment. On the EA sports pick. I legitimately think that might win you the draft here. Seth. I yeah. Mean, it, NCAA football has, I mean, it has as cult of a following as, probably any video game ever because i have my copy of ncaa 13 that i still play on my ps3 like i still plug that in and i yeah. go through i probably go through probably two or three spurts a year well i'll play it for about a week or two like probably yeah. like, uh, consistently i'll do my um consistently will play my i'll do a road to glory i'll do a uh what uh, what not the franchise dynasty the dynasty yes yeah and you know i always have my uh my coaches my coach or my players always leaf loomis jr don't know why but that's just my video game character name and uh yeah those are always i love that here Brandon yeah i'm back i'm still playing in cwa 14 like occasionally uh like you said you just you may only pick it up like once or twice during the year, you know, especially now, like when your schedules are so busy, but you'll just get in this grind where you'll pump out a season or two in a week and then you yeah, go back down, but it's always there. You always come back to it, but yeah. And uh, you know, I, it just seemed like a no brainer to me. This is kind of why the, you know, the name image, image likeness thing, it's always been around, so, you know, going back to the fab five too, um, you know, at the university of Michigan, it's always been in the discussion, but now it's like, it's finally here. And I feel like, you know, some good things are going to happen. I'm looking forward to like the return of uh, college football video games, even if it's not NCAA, if it can just go toe to toe with Madden in some way, shape or form, it just seems like that series fell way off. I, I think that the NCAA 14 right now is still way better than the new Madden that they're putting out or the last one they just put out. It's our, it's still better than it. Oof. yeah no i could i mean i agree with you on that people are buying the game for a hundred dollars a pop on eBay yeah for reason so all right i'm gonna get into my next pick and i'm gonna go with bose so i think that bose speakers are some of the best products bang for your buck you're gonna get on the entire market and it's a little out there i mean i know some people like would probably prefer to Go with Beats for the flashier option, but I um I got a pair of Bose headphones for uh, Christmas a few years back. I probably about five years ago, and they finally just died on me this past year, and they were by far the greatest pair of headphones I think I've ever had. And if I had the cash, 
on hand, I would buy myself a brand new pair, but I don't, but it'd be awesome if I could sign myself an endorsement deal and get, get a pair. It's a good pick. Um, Cause tr- me personally, I don't like beats because especially the ones that go over your head, damn things break mm-hmm. so damn easily. So mm-hmm. I've never had a pair of bows. I do want a pair of bows and truthfully, that would be my meal ticket to get in a bow. So I wouldn't mind that at all. That's a good pick. And kind of adding on to your what you were saying about bows too. So like when the or beats really, yeah, when beats by Dre, when those like really nice, you know, headphones came out, what I think mm-hmm. want to say back in like 2013, 2014 is when they really started booming. They, you know, they took off and they were nice at the time, but it's just like how like everything's just kind of rev- you know, revolutionized. Where you're in the AirPods now. Samsung has their own earbuds. Mm-hmm. There's just so many better ways to do it. And it's like, I can't go back. Like, I, I, you know, I wear these mainly for gaming and stuff too, but, you know, even just some AirPods are nice, nicer than these at times. Oh, and like the, the pair of bows I had, I mean, they were five years old, but they, yeah. I mean, the noise canceling on them, even from five years ago, was absolutely insane. Like, I, I, lo- I loved them. And, you know, everyone loves having a good speaker around too. If you kick around, just do some sponsored posts with this with a Bose speaker in the background. You know, I, I'd be okay with that. That that'd be yeah, living the high living the high life. All right, so I think uh, Brandon, you have your second pick now. All right, uh, my laptop went to die on me so fast, but um, I am gonna go with Wheaties. Now, depending on wherever you grew up in, you see your favorite athlete on a Wheaties box. Now, how cool would it be for a college player to be on a box of Wheaties when, you know, you had Grant Hill or, or in college or Ricky Williams or or the Fab Five, you would want to see them on a Wheaties box because they you gravitated towards them more than you did the professional athletes. I think that's the cool it'll be the coolest thing ever and truthfully like that will have people buy Wheaties again I'm pretty sure people buy Wheaties most probably mostly older people because they grew up eating that stuff but just to give the nostalgic uh factor for a lot of people and hopefully the young the young kids will follow too isn't there a saying and just real quick like don't forget you know don't forget to eat your Wheaties is that the saying or something along the lines of that yeah so it just that's how far back it goes and that's a good that's a good pick there because that goes that goes way back yeah you know i i I love that pick i i think that's awesome these i mean like you're saying older people are mainly buying the wheaties but you still see people having the boxes of wheaties with athletes on them displayed prominently every i mean everywhere literally yeah, no, I think they should, I think, they should do that more often now because because truthfully, I don't really go to grocery store like that. I get my stuff delivered, but I don't really see like athletes on a box anymore. And I think that 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 would add an incentive to do it, whether people don't know whether they know what it tastes like or not. I think that's a good incentive to get people to actually buy them. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the list right now. The first player or athlete to be put onto a box of Wheaties was Lou Gehrig in 1934. Sheesh. So, that, so that tradition has been around for damn near a hundred years at this point. And this list is just a lot longer than I expected. And the last person, or not the last, I can't even find it, but yeah, Lou Gehrig, 1934. That blows my mind. I did not realize they've been doing it that long. That's crazy. Not I did at all. not know that. Wow. wow. More you know. And I think the last one was Russell Wilson in 2018, I believe, is what I'm finding. Yeah, I definitely would have known that. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> All right, Brandon. So you want to wrap up with your third pick here? Yes, sir. So um, I'm going to go a little bit of a another nostalgic pick, but also something that people see come around maybe a couple of like a couple of times a year because they drop here and there i'm gonna go with starter now as an athlete in college or even like going to the pros and you you're born in a certain era and you saw the starter jackets that people were wearing and it didn't even have to be the starter jackets the hats the t-shirts it was the coolest thing because they had very, very, very flashy and different designs from the rest of the people. And you being an athlete, and, and if you get a starter, um, excuse me, a starter endorsement, that's a pretty big deal. So you got to probably have some pull to, 
you know, have those starter jackets from yesteryears to be re-released. And truthfully, at, for a guy that's in the clothes like myself, I'll be greatly appreciated if one of these big athletes partner with Starter and start bringing those things back. Because I promise you, they can take my money any day of the week. Starter is a wonderful brand. I hate that it's Amazon exclusive. And truthfully, that I think that needs to change because if they want to have, if they want more and more customers and they can have more ideas to do these things, that would be perfect. My brain would have never gone to Starter, and that <laughs> that that pick is incredible. I mean, Starter jackets from the '90s are still some of the coolest things, in my opinion. I mean, it just they're so recognizable too which blows my mind that they're just not massively distributed even at this point, because you see brands across the entire, in, the entire world trying to replicate what starter was doing in the nineties with what they're putting out now. Mm -hmm. Mostly Mitchell and Ness, Mitchell and Ness, does, mm -hmm. they, and I love Mitchell and Ness, but like, they're the ones who, who, who they got that inspiration from them. And I appreciate it because they do, they do an awesome job, but there's only one starter, of course. A uh, quick question. Where do you guys get your pants from? Where do you usually get your pants? Because usually everyone kind of has their own, you know, like for me, for the longest time, it was American Eagle. I would only get my pants from American Eagle. So I do um, H&M mostly, but here and there, I, I delve into Fashion Nova. But I would tell you, if you are going to do Fashion Nova, please, like, please be clear about your size because they'll make you think that you're fat. Because you may think you are, yeah. you may think you are thirty four. You end up being a thirty eight in fashion over. So be careful with that. But I mostly do H and M. Yeah, honestly, I don't even have um, that one brand. But if I had to pick one, I got uh, I have like one pair of jeans I got from Banana Republic, and those might be the most comfortable pair of pants I own. So if I had to pick, probably there. But those were a gift, and I would never spend that much. Money. Yeah. Pants, yeah, pants can definitely be like way expensive. It's kind of luxury, you know, to go out and have like multiple pairs of pants now. Cause I mean, even at the cheapest places, they're usually like 50 bucks still, 40, mm -hmm. 50 bucks if you go to Kohl's, if you guys have those around where you're at. Um, but it's nice that you mentioned starter because like now that I'm like a little older, you know, I'm still young. I think I'm 26, 27. I don't even know how old I am anymore. Uh, like I just started going back and I found some like nice pants at Walmart, uh, these Wrangler cargo pants and, that's where you would see stuff like starter. I'm pretty sure. Cause I didn't know it was only Amazon exclusive. I haven't seen starter, you know um, I haven't seen it anywhere for the longest time. And I used to see it all the time, like at Walmart. So it just kind of, yeah, sorry. It kind of went on like a little spiel there, but uh, like now that I'm, you know, getting to that point where I don't really care where it's from anymore. They did have some nice stuff and they, you know, their undershirts and everything. They could go toe to toe with Nike any day and their dry fit. I totally agree. And by the way, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned like the pants are a luxury nowadays because that's why my ass stays out of American Eagle because they pants <laughs> expensive as hell for no reason. Yeah, and I was bougie. I, I had, I've had two pants to American Eagle and both of them have ripped. So I will be staying out of there for future references. Yeah, no more. Definitely not buying my pants from there anymore. They're they're expensive. They say buy one, get one half off, but like one pair of jeans is like 80 bucks anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> it's 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 almost a scam really to go there. And I'm like, luckily I've been working from home the last year and a half. So my favorite pants have just been sweatpants. Lucky you. Lucky you, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna go with my last pick, I'm in between two right now, but I think I'm going to go with one that wasn't originally on my list. And I'm going to go with Coinbase. Ooh. So I think crypto has been really, I don't, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I don't know anything about crypto, like at all. But if you were going to pay me to promote your, your app and convince kids that they should start investing in alternative ways and, you want to slide some crypto my way and that's your form of payment for me, I would do that in a heartbeat. I mean, honestly, crypto seems so fake to me, but everyone is telling me I should buy it. And it's fake money. Yeah. It's fake I mean, money. It's like, it's like a simulation. That's like the way I look at it. It's like, like a simulation. I mean, you look at what happened with Dogecoin. I mean, everyone thought it was going to explode when Elon Musk was hosting SNL and it just completely is just it tanked. 
it, yeah, it tanked. It's it, it did again. bounce back like after a little bit. And I followed it mainly because I put like a little bit into it and I yeah. made, you know, I made a little bit of profit off of it. And quite, you know, it, seem, it seems really smart. My only concern with that is at what point does the market become oversaturated with all these, like anybody can kind of develop their own, like, you know, yeah, their electronic currency. And I definitely like it though, because they'd be like, oh, my favorite athlete is like the face of it. And it, it's a smart, it's a smart pick because they would probably dump all whatever little money they had in it. And they're like, oh, I'm going to invest in it because this, you know, this guy's the limit. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I mean, someone want to make more money, they're going to make more money. So that's, exactly. that's, a, that's a very good pick. Yeah. I mean, that's just kind of the way I looked at it too, by in convincing people that you're doing it. So other people will then do it, making your investments that you put zero money into just explode. And I just, I, I don't even understand it, but you know what? It, I, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it doesn't that's, have that's to. A, that, that's, that, that's the beauty of it. It doesn't have to make sense. I mean, and you mentioned too that anyone can make a, a crypto at this point. I don't know if you guys remember this, but a few years ago, like Steven Seagal tried making his own uh, his own cryptocurrency. Obviously, it tanked. It didn't get off the ground floor. But I mean, if Steven Seagal is trying to make it, who's to say that, you know, I can't make a cryptocurrency? Exactly. Sucks to him. Yeah. <laughs> care, less, care less about him. Sucks for him. <laughs> All right. So, Seth, do you want to close us out with your last pick? Yeah, my last one uh, seems a little seems a little obvious here. I went with Fanatics mainly because this is where I get all like my man cave stuff. But it just seems like an easy another no brainer pick for me. Um, you know, this is where usually if you want authentic, legitimate jerseys any sports things that are licensed usually get them from, from fanatics anymore. Plus I think they're partners with like all, you know, all the universities, all the leagues and everything. So let's say, you know, if you're the top selling Jersey, now you're getting portions of that cut where maybe if they were going right from this, you know, the school's concessions as a student athlete, you're not making any of those purchases, but now you can have everything next day or to next day or to you. So why not just, uh, you know, you get endorsed by fanatics and there you go. Now you have all your man cave stuff, all your, you know, you're getting the cuts from all the Jersey sales and everything else. So why wouldn't you want that? I just, it, it seemed easy to me. Uh, just, I kind of stuck with, you know, everything sports kind of, you know, in my line, but uh, yeah, I like the, I still kind of really like your uh, local car dealership for I uh, state there. Cause it just kind of hits home. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. I work, I work lids part time. And just getting a discount, which it's an undisclosed number, but it's a pretty good number. I tell you <laughs> that I love that pick because I'm telling you, them discounts come in handy because I don't know what's going on with Fanatics. And I hope by the grace of God that they accidentally click on this podcast and I got something to say to them. Where are the 65% off sales? Yeah, I had them all summer. Where are they at? I need it, them. It's like you get those or you get free shipping. It's like one or the other, but then it kind of adds up to be the same thing. Also, I need a valley hat, so I'm going to hit you up after this. I'll add me. I got you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So that's going to wrap up our episode. We're going to get that made into a graphic somehow, and I think what we should do this week instead of doing – the tournament style. I think we just do one vote and keep it open for a few days just because, I mean, I, I don't know. that I, I see that being more of a uh, way to go about it this week. Not sure how you guys feel. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm cool with that. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of picks there. That's a lot of tweets. Yeah. Works for me. So that's going to wrap up this week's show. Remember, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. It was great having all three of us back on the show. And uh, go Suns. Go Suns. Suns and six, hopefully. Or seven. Just hopefully the Suns. Next time we talk about it. <laughs>